it's easy to imagine that the current position of the Irish government towards Israel is the only one it's ever had, uh, or or similar positions at least, because for so long it's had a either negative or ambiguous stance towards Israel. But there was a time early on in Israel's existence when it was seen as the underdog and there was some support for it, but not anymore. And that's something for another video. But the reason I mention it is today we've seen two news reports about the current, the ongoing situation with aid getting into sort of Gaza. And you'd expect the one from Ireland, T-Shock condemns Israeli bill banning UN aid agency on UNRWA or UNRWA, as we'll call them for, for an out of Stop me having to say the acronym at length. Um, Tishuk Simon Harris has said all United Member States should condemn legislation passed by the Israeli Parliament that bans the UN agency for Palestinian refugees from working in Israel. Well, that's not really surprising. Simon Harris has made it plain he's not particularly fond of the way um, Israel is dealing with the situation in Gaza. Anyone in Israel who was hoping once Leo Radka wandered off that Simon Harris wandering in would suddenly be uh, more friendly towards them was no doubt not not at all pleased. Uh, now, Ireland is a small country in physical terms. It doesn't have a great deal of what you'd call hard political power. Its military is, for practical purposes, well, m minor. But it does have a great deal of soft political power due to a very large diaspora and a very large number of resonances between issues of political oppression that occur in Irish and Israeli history and the way some of Irish and Israeli history connect in unexpected ways, which I've touched upon in a few videos in the past here. But more surprisingly was the US is um, slowly sort of realising that it's becoming problematic to support this situation on stop. Now, of course, there is the issue, of course, that Joe Biden are, and, and and the political class in the US know that with the election coming up, they're on a win-win streak there, really. If they win, they can enforce these decisions or, or marillate them. If they don't win and Trump wins, well, they can say that's not their problem because they're no longer in power. But it's surprising to see how the US is not too pleased about what's going on there. From the BBC, the US warn, warns Israel over Gaza aid as deadline nears. You should remember, I think, for a few weeks ago, the US gave Israel a 30-day or so deadline to get something sorted out and let some more aid in there. Well, Israel must immediately address the catastrophic humanitarian situation in Gaza. The US envoy to the UN has warned as the deadline approaches to improve the flow of aid or face cuts to American military assistance. Now, Israel has a fairly powerful military machine of its own, plenty of factories and military companies like Elbit and that, but it does require, does have quite a lot of support in military matters from the US and to a lesser extent, the UK and other countries. Israel's words must be matched by action on the ground, Linda Thompson-Grenfell said right now, and that is not happening. The US has given its ally until the 12th of November to surge all assistance with a minimum of 350 lorries entering Gaza daily. But the UN says only 10% of that number have crossed each day on average since then. Now, I don't know if they're planning to go with that wonderfully horrid plan of penning everyone up as per a certain retired major general in the Israeli ministry, who seemed to think this was a logical method that if you penned everyone up and anyone who didn't surrender was obviously Hamas, which um, seemed to live in cloud cuckoo land for a variety of reasons. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Danny Danon, said it was going above and beyond its humanitarian obligations and blamed Hamas. Well, really, at some point, it's not good enough, really. You can't just keep blaming them. It's, it's impossible to argue that a toddler in a crib or an old man with cancer is it's a credible ther uh, terrorist threat. It's becoming quite, quite ridiculous now. I'm not quite at the point where I'd use the word genocide, but it is beginning to creep across my mind. But there is a concerted effort to, like, sort of um, obliterate the people of, of Gaza and push them out of existence and just degrade or dehumanise them.
there are it must be said in fairness there are israelis who are have better attitudes and want the whole thing to end and are not overly fond of netanyahu's wonderfully hardline approach and have made their voice heard but it seems that they seem to be shouting into into an empty empty air and that no one's hearing them At the minute, I would hate to be living in Gaza. It looks like hell on earth, to be quite frank, with the lack of lack of medicine, lack of food, lack of heat, lack of any way to keep yourself hygienically clean. It must be an absolutely horrid place. Let's have a look at the number of people of amount of aid that's entered. According to data published by UNRWA, only 850 aid lorries have crossed into Gaza this month, compared with about 3,000 lorries in September. A total of 502 lorries have entered since the letter, with an average of 35 lorries crossing each day between the 14th and 29th of October. Meanwhile, Israel's data says a total of 1,386 lorries have crossed between the 1st and 28th October, a daily to- average of 49. It also says there are 670 lorry loads of, and this is the point I'd like to stress, a waiting collection. Well, it seems a bit hard to hand it out for a variety of reasons. Mr. Thomas Greenfield also expressed US concern about the two laws adapted by the Israeli parliament, forbidding Israel state officials from contact with UNRWA and prohibiting UNRWA operations in Israel and annexed East Jerusalem in three months' time. Now, my own worry about this whole situation is just like any long-running situation like this, such as Syria or Ukraine, is you'll get compassion fatigue. It's on the news constantly, 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 and the human misery of it is hard for people to comprehend at an individual level. But it does have, like all those other issues, real ramifications out there for us. It's not just an academic issue happening thousands of miles away it has real issues that may spill back across the whole globe for all of us and and how nations a nation like israel is perceived in the future it's time for some better leader than benjamin netanyahu to step up in israel in my opinion the man has become a problem for the state there